Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at TheServerSide.com, and I want to quickly show you how to write a Python-powered AWS Lambda function. Now, the first thing you need to do is log into your AWS Management Console and go to the Lambda tab. I always like to navigate to the Lambda dashboard, so I'll click on the dashboard under Lambda, and you'll notice that beautiful orange Create Function button. Click it. That'll allow you to start creating the basis for your Python function. I'm going to call mine my Python function and the version. Well, there's 3.7, there's 3.8, there's 3.9, but I'm going to choose Python 10. And that's it for this step. You can actually scroll down, find the create function button, and now your function is created. But it doesn't really have any customized code. If we scroll down on this My Python Function page, you'll actually see a cute little code editor. Click the Nag screen there. We don't need that. And you'll notice if you click on Lambda Function, there's actually some code there where it actually just returns hello from Lambda. I'm going to make a quick edit just to be honest here. I'm going to say print my first Lambda Function. The print actually goes to the AWS log. So if you ever wonder, how do you do logging in AWS? Well, if you're not using a logging framework, just the prints will do it enough. But I'll click Deploy, then I will click Test. And as soon as that test is hit, you get an option to invoke the test. I'm going to do that, and you can actually see the body, and you can see the logs there. So everything is working correctly. Now let's go back to our code and Let's just do a, a little change into the body, the output, what gets returned. Nothing too crazy, but I just want to make sure that we can indicate that indeed a change has been made. Hello from my Python Lambda code. Click Deploy. Click Test once again to invoke that test. And you can see the change in the response and in the log files. Now, we're going to do something super cool next. I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to click on configuration and one of the tabs on the left there is function URL. I'm going to create a function URL to invoke this Lambda function over the internet. I'm going to turn authentication off. You might not always want to do that, but I like living dangerously. Click save. And then all of a sudden I got a URL I can copy. I'm going to copy that AWS Python Lambda URL, put it up into my browser, get rid of the server side there, put on the URL and boom, look at that. That is the code, that is the output displayed from my Lambda function. Just click on that code there and you can actually see, yeah, the output that was in that browser window is the body of my code. So this is all working pretty cool. We've actually got an AWS Python Lambda function that runs on the internet. Now, I'm going to do a couple of changes here. In the test configuration, if you scroll down, you'll notice that you can pass some JSON to your code. I'm going to put a name value pair in here. The key is going to be greetings, and then the greeting is going to be my JSON hello world. But the idea is this is a payload that can come across the internet and be passed to your Lambda function, some JSON. I'm going to show you how to pull that JSON payload out. So make sure you go in here and give your event a name before you try and save it. I'll call it my Python Lambda event. Scroll down, click save. And now that event with that JSON has been registered. Now I gotta pull it in. So pulling it in isn't too hard. All I'm gonna do is create a variable called greeting. And you notice an event is passed into the method. I'll say event, and then in single quotes, greetings, which says get that greetings, the value associated with that greetings key out of the payload that was passed to the event. And I'm gonna do something funky with that text that comes in. I'm gonna make it lowercase and I'm going to encrypt it, hold it in an encryption variable by replacing the, I don't know, the letter E in the text with the number three and then, I don't know, replace the letter L with the number one. That'll just be some proof that I've played around with that JSON file. That all looks good. There's the return. I'm actually just going to print out the variable for when somebody invokes this. Click deploy. Then I'm going to click on test. 
And you notice that what gets returned is my JSON hello world message that's kind of encrypted with that crazy lowercase e to three, one to L, L to one. And you can see it all comes from that JSON there. So now I'm actually handling a payload, extracting some JSON content and working well. Now I'd actually like to test this with Postman. And Postman does a, a couple of interesting things. One is it puts a, a body element in front of the JSON. So to extract key value pairs from your JSON, you first have to go into the event object and ask for the content associated with that body element. And then once you've got that, you can then go in and say, hey, go to that event body and then pull out the value associated with the greetings key. That now gives me greetings. And so it's exactly the same. It's just a little bit different as they like to say. I'm gonna click deploy. I've still got that URL. So I'm gonna copy that URL. And then I'm gonna bring in Postman. And in Postman, I'm gonna create a a new HTTPS invocation. So I'll click on the HTTP get, put in the URL, and in the request body, I want to put in some JSON. Click the raw tab. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and go back to my function. I'm gonna go into the test, click configuration, just so I can get that JSON there. So this will pass the JSON up from the postman kind of browser recreation and pass it in. So put that in as the payload, click send in postman and boom, my JSON hello world message now comes back. And that is how you do your testing of your AWS Python Lambda function in postman and even pass some JSON to it, simulating a, a microservice or a, a real world application. So there you go. That's how easy it is to create a Python based AWS Lambda function, create a public URL for it and even test it in Postman. Well, there you go. If you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great content on Python, Java, AWS, GitHub, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, I would tell you to follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ and you're, you're watching this on YouTube, right? Well, like, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?